Okay, this is a photo of the Parrot GPS board minus the U blocks chip there in the middle. Um, this was removed because on this pin here, this is the VCC uh, pin, the powering pin, and this was dead short to ground, which is why I removed the chip. But like I said in a previous video, even with this chip removed, it you can still fly it, it will still boot up. But obviously there's no position hold with the GPS chip, it's just using the um, downward camera and the sonar to maintain height and position. But um, I thought, wonder if I could get this going again. So what I did was I used a another ball to remove a working uh, U-Blocks chip which was exactly the same. Okay, this is a photo of the donor board that I removed this U-Block chip here. This is exactly the same uh, number as the one that was on the original Parrot GPS board that went dead short. So anyway, I used a hot air gun to remove this IC off of here and uh, to transplant that over to the, the Parrot GPS board. Okay, this is a photo of the uh, U-Blocks GPS chip soldered back onto the, the Parrot board. Um, this little IC to the right, more on that in a little bit. But this white thing at the bottom, for anybody who's wondering, all it is is a bit of plastic with some foam in the middle, just to cover the barometer. So maybe it'll get a better altitude hold with that over. But anyway, once this was all back together, I put the ribbon back in, fired the bebop up and it booted there no problems there but on the flight uh, app um, under GPS it showed nothing it was just blank there was nothing there at all so what I thought was it's probably the firmware in this U-Block chip because obviously it wasn't the one that was on the parrot board so it was configured differently so what I did I reflashed the firmware in the bebop 2 to see if that would actually update the firmware inside this chip itself but unfortunately that didn't work um, this is where this little IC on the right comes into play okay this is a picture of the GPS board again this time with the metal shield removed so I could get to the, the firmware chip the Wimbom firmware chip there uh, the one at the top is the original one off of the the other short circuit board but this chip, um, I did read it with a meter and there was no shorts on that at all so I was hoping that was still okay. So I removed this one here with a hot air station and transplanted this one on there. Put the shield back on but then I did read, especially I did read the pins but especially this one here which was pin, uh, the pin VCC uh, and there was still no short there so I thought well that's good. So I plugged it back into the Bebop, fired it up connected with the free flight app and uh, under the GPS version it actually did say a number now version 2 but what I did notice I think it was after another reboot of it it actually upgraded that to a version 3 so I thought well that all looks pretty promising so anyway uh, put the whole thing back together and took it outside to try it out and it picked up well as you see in the video that follows about 16 odd satellites it seemed to hold its position ok however the original AR drone with the GPS module how that used to work was I think it was either 15 or 20 feet once you was over that it, the GPS took over and it didn't rely on the downward camera anymore now I don't know whether the Bebop 2 works like that or it's a combination of them both the only way I can be really sure of the GPS position hold, I guess, is to take it out for a proper flight and over the, over get it over 20 feet and then just to make sure. But as I say, because it's picking up all the satellites and on the free flight app, it's all showing up as it should. I'm pretty hopeful that's all okay. But the other thing I was thinking of as well, on this uh, GPS board, you've got some test pins and I'm sure uh, one of them uh, must go to the pin I'm interested in which is the receive one because I've got a, fly, um, a little Flytrex module that I used to use in DJI Phantom and that used to read in the GPS data and then upload that to their site 
So and I was curious whether that would work on this because it shouldn't be that much of a job to wire that in. I don't think it should affect anything else. So something else I might do later on is give that a go as well just to see whether that little module will still work because it doesn't weigh, it weighs bugger all anyway um, just with an SD card in it. So that might be a, a handy backup for the flight for the flight data as well. So I'll probably be giving that a, a go later on once I know that this is working okay. But for long term, this GPS ball will have to be replaced because it's been through hell, um, as you can see. And relying on that 100% is probably not a good idea because I've got no idea whether any of the saltwater corrosion went through the multi-layer board and it's sitting in there festering and sooner or later it'll cut, it'll leak through a track. So yeah, this is okay for a test, but long term it will have to be replaced with a new board. Okay, coming up is a, a short video of testing of these LG 18650 batteries. I've only put in the first minute and the last minute of the flight because just to sit through the rest is going to bore everybody to tears. Um, but if you are going to make a pack up like this, something to really bear in mind, apart from you will void your warranty, so it's not worth trying to do a mod like this until the Bebop's totally out of, uh, of the warranty, to be honest. Um, but the other thing to bear in mind is um, you're going to have to make yourself up a, a balance lead because you can't use the original Parrot charger to charge these kind of cells because the charge I think is rated at 3.5 amps. That's way too high for these cells. So you must make yourself up a uh, balance connector and connect this battery to a normal balance charger, which is what I did. And I was charging it at 1 amp, which is fine for what I was going to use it for. As you can see from the little chart here as well, um, right near the end, about 14 minutes, that's when it really falls down and kind of plateaus near the end. I mean, these cells will go down lower than 3 volts. Um, I think it's 2.7 maybe, the cut-off voltage. Although you can mess about with a config file on the uh, Bebop itself and kind of get this to go a bit lower, which I did try, it's not advisable because... The, the voltage that comes from the cells or the, the lipo pack on this also has to run through and be converted to the voltages for the, the other chips as well and if you go down under um, Parrot's cut off voltage you could risk uh, problems with it so although I've done a quick test on it and I got an extra couple of minutes by lowering that rate I decided it just wasn't worth it I'd stick with what the Parrot cut off was which is 9 volts which is 3 volts for cell is the critical landing voltage um, so that's what this was landing at. Uh, the only thing to bear in mind a little bit, I think I think they've changed something in the firmware. Because I'm sure it used to be a bit higher than that. I mean, maybe somebody else out there um, knows about that. I mean, I should have done a little test before I upgraded the firmware. And to be honest, it's a lot of messing about to go back to the old, fair, old firmware when you're using an iPhone. You have to restore it with a previous version of the app, blah, blah, blah. So I just didn't really want to go through all that again. Um, but as I say, this one lands at zero. Well, I say zero on the f uh, free flight app. I think it says one percent when it actually lands, but that is nine volts um, cut off. So this is going from hundred percent down to nine volts on the on the pack itself. Um, but yeah, it seems to. I mean, from the the time I got from it, nearly nineteen minutes. Although that is just hovering. Um, if you're at doing a flight with know some wind it's probably going to knock it down so i'm looking at thinking probably about 15 minutes is about right for this little pack here um, which is nothing like what you get with the original the proper official flight packs for sure but if you've got an old flight pack that's totally puffed out and it's useless or it's dead and you've got a, a unit that's out of, uh, out of warranty and you have the skills to do this it's kind of all right it's like a little test battery and i was just curious um, how well these cells will perform. So in summary then, yep, you can definitely repair the GPS board if you have the patience, the skills and the uh, equipment needed to do it. But the price of a new board isn't that bad. So for most people, if the GPS fails, they'll probably just go out and buy a new board anyway. As for using 18650 cells, um, the technology is, is getting a lot better. It still doesn't match what you can get with a normal lithium polymer battery pack but it's getting closer I'm sure in the future that it's probably going to be something that you will see more of 
because um, they are better in, in many ways. They're supposedly, well, I'm going to test this over a long term because you're supposed to be able to get more charge cycles out, out of them. So I am going to continually run this pack just to see how much it towels off the, the capacity of them. So that will be an ongoing test. But uh, my next test with this unit now, the GPS is working, will be to take it out for a proper test flight, just to check that the GPS position hold does work okay and the the, the flight data, etc, etc, works all right on it. So anyway, thank you for watching the video. I hope that there was something in there that was of help to anybody. Anyway, you all take care. Bye.